Well, it was also fascinating to me at the time, uh, pro digging into some of these cases, that it often did seem to be the case that uh, you would have a fairly low-level person who had gotten a message from their boss, who'd gotten a message from their boss, who'd gotten a message from the chief financial officer, that they were really unhappy about numbers coming in this month that showed, uh, that, that showed particular el uh, earnings that were not as strong as they should be, or uh, missing th things that should have been stronger, or units that should have been doing better. And it was the case that sometimes somebody making $60,000 a year working as a bookkeeper in an accounting department would fabricate a document. Once they got in the habit of this, they started generating hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bogus invoices for billings that were never going to occur, and then creating ledgers of this. And in the end, it never was, there, it was never possible to demonstrate that anyone had specifically told them to do that, but they believed they had to do it, or that they would lose their jobs, or that their whole unit would be shut down. Yeah, and there, I, I call it the ostrich problem in the book that you, know, you could have an executive whose head is in the sand. They're willfully blind. They know that the message has been sent real strong to violate the law, whether it's safety rules or environmental rules or fraud or financial reporting rules. They're sending the message, but they're, I don't want to read that document, just tell me that it's good uh, kind of supervision of employees. You know, we recently had this trial of Don Blankenship, the former CEO of Massey Cole, and the structure of that trial looked very much like the age-old situation, going back to Health South, going back to trials long before, where the CEO says, mine safety, I care about that deeply. I had no idea, I have no idea what these mine superintendents are saying about a culture of non-compliance with mine safety law. Keeping separate books to show the inspectors, I had no idea. And you know, the Massey Coal explosion. Uh, Which killed 29 men, I believe. 29 miners lost their lives. Uh, it was an incredibly lucrative, high-grade mine. And so it sounds like what the CEO says is, you know, I just said, dig the coal, dig it faster. I wanted money out of that mine. Uh, now, the supervisors who are testifying at the trial are saying, well, look, you know, the pressure was on us. You know, if we brought up safety stuff, the message was don't turn this mine into a construction site. Don't be doing a lot of extra stuff. The focus should be on pulling out the ore uh, and, and not safety. Uh, now, what made the case complicated and interesting was that insurance lawyers and you, you don't want to cross insurance lawyers. Uh, dug up stuff that the, the prosecutors presumably wouldn't have known about. Maybe they would have found it. Tapes, the, and, and sort of Nixon tapes in, in the CEO's office. And, uh, but even still, you know, the jury deliberated in that case for eight days, and ultimately they convicted the CEO of a misdemeanor where you don't have to show that he knew it. It is it, a lesser mental state for misdemeanors. Now, maybe in this country what we need is more misdemeanors where if the executive has responsibility for the violation and the violation is committed under, under her watch, then you can have a responsible corporate officer held accountable for a misdemeanor where they're not going to go to jail for more than a year. They may just pay a fine. But it's the crime of being a terrible CEO when horrible crimes are committed. Now, we have actually that doctrine in a couple of areas, but we haven't used it too much in this country. And that, that might be something if executives know that they will be held accountable. For, for serious crimes, maybe that would be a, a good thing. Um, but the company itself was not prosecuted. It entered into an agreement with the government, right? So the company enters into a deferred prosecution agreement. So the company has no criminal record, despite the 29 deaths. Uh, 